The Savannah River site is a nuclear reservation in the United States in the state of South Carolina, located on land in Aiken, Allendale and Barnwell counties adjacent to the Savannah River, 25 miles northeast of Augusta, Georgia. The site was built during the 1950s to refine nuclear materials for deployment in nuclear weapons. It covers 310 square miles and employs more than 10,000 people. The site is protected by G4S Secure Solutions. It is owned by the U.S. Department of Energy. The management and operating contract is held by Savannah River Nuclear Solutions LLC, and the liquid waste operations contract is held by Savannah River Remediation, which is a team of companies led by URS Corporation. A major focus is cleanup activities related to work done in the past for American nuclear buildup. Currently none of the reactors on site are operating, although two of the reactor buildings are being used to consolidate and store nuclear materials. SRS is also home to the Savannah River National Laboratory and the USA's only operating radiochemical separations facility. Its tritium facilities are also the United States' only source of tritium, an essential component in nuclear weapons. The USA's only mixed oxide fuel manufacturing plant is being constructed at SRS overseen by the National Nuclear Security Administration. When operational, the MOX facility will convert legacy weapons-grade plutonium into fuel suitable for commercial power reactors. Future plans for the site cover a wide range of options, including host to research reactors, a reactor park for power generation, and other possible uses. DOE and its corporate partners are watched by a combination of local, regional and national regulatory agencies and citizen groups. Security is provided by Centera Security Services, Inc. History In 1950, the federal government requested DuPont to build and operate a nuclear facility near the Savannah River in South Carolina. The company had expertise in nuclear operations, having designed and built the plutonium production complex at the Hanford site for the Manhattan Project during World War II. A large portion of farmland, the towns of Alenton and Dumbarton, and several other communities including Mayors Mill, Lee, Robbins, and Hawthorne were bought under eminent domain, and the site of 310 square miles became the Savannah River site, managed by the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission. Biologists from the University of Georgia, led by Professor Eugene Odom, began ecological studies of local plants and animals in 1951, and plant construction began. Production of heavy water for site reactors started in the heavy water rework facility in 1952, and the first production reactor, R reactor, went critical in 1953. P, L, and K reactors followed in 1954, and the first irradiated fuel was discharged. F Canyon the world's first operational full-scale PUREX separation plant, began radioactive operations on November 4. PUREX extracted plutonium and uranium products from materials irradiated in the reactors. In 1955, C reactor went critical. The first plutonium shipment left the site. H Canyon, a chemical separation facility, began radioactive operations. Permanent tritium facilities became operational and the first shipment of tritium to the Atomic Energy Commission was made. In 1956, construction of the basic plant was complete. Equals Nobel Prize equals, the neutrino was discovered by Fred Rains and Clyde Cowan using the flux from P reactor, with confirmation published in the 20 July 1956 issue of Science. Rains was awarded the 1995 Physics Nobel Prize. Cowan had already died. In 1961, the AEC established a permanent ecology laboratory on the site. Two army barracks were converted into laboratory space for the scientists. The next year, the University of Georgia hired a full-time staff with doctoral degrees to expand the research effort. Known initially as the Laboratory of Radiation Ecology, it was renamed in the mid-1960s the Savannah River Ecology Laboratory reflecting the broad spectrum of ecological studies carried out on the site. In 1962, the heavy water components test reactor went into operation, testing the heavy water system for use with civilian power reactors. In 1963, 
receiving basin for off-site fuels received its first shipment of off-site spent nuclear fuel. That same year, Curium Du-44 was produced as a heat source for space exploration. This was the first full-scale conversion of an SRP reactor load to non-weapons materials. Our reactor and HWCTL were shut down in 1964. In 1965, Californium-252, the heaviest isotope produced at SRP, was separated as a byproduct of the Curium program. Beginning in 1969, Californium Do 52 was made in a separate production program. Equals Palomas equals, following the 1966 Palomas B 52 crash, the Savannah River site received contaminated soil from the environmental cleanup and remediation. Soil with radiation contamination levels above 1.2 MBQM2 was placed in 250 litre drums and shipped to the Savannah River plant for burial. A total of 2.2 hectares was decontaminated by this technique, producing 6,000 barrels. 17 hectares of land with lower levels of contamination was mixed to a depth of 30 centimeters by harrowing and plowing. On rocky slopes with contamination above 120 kbqm2, the soil was removed with hand tools and shipped to the United States in barrels. In 1968, L reactor was shut down for upgrades, and in 1971, K reactor became the first reactor to be controlled by computer. The site was designated as a National Environmental Research Park in 1972. 1977 saw the startup of the Plutonium Fuel Fabrication Facility. The Savannah River Archaeological Program was established on site in 1978 to perform data analysis of prehistoric and historic sites on SRP land. Equals remediation equals in 1981, an environmental cleanup program began. M Area Settling Basin Cleanup began under the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act. The Heavy Water Rework Facility was closed in 1982. Construction of the Defense Waste Processing Facility began in 1983. Wakanet Services Incorporated began providing security support services at SRP. In 1985, HB Line began producing plutonium Do 38 for NASA's Deep Space Exploration Program. The L reactor was restarted and C reactor shut down. A full scale groundwater remediation system constructed in M area. Construction of saltstone and of the replacement tritium facility began in 1986. In 1987, DuPont notified DOE that it would not continue to operate and manage the site. The effluent treatment project construction began. In 1988, K, L and P reactors were shut down. An effluent treatment facility began operations to treat low-level radioactive wastewater from the F and H area separations facilities. In 1989, the site was included on the national priority list and became regulated by the EPA. Westinghouse Savannah River Company assumed management and operation of site facilities. The name of the facility changed from Savannah River Plant to Savannah River Site. In 1990, construction of a cooling tower for K reactor began. Saltstone started operation. In 1991, the mixed waste management facility became the first site facility to be closed and certified under the provisions of RCRAL reactor and M area settling basin was shut down. With the end of the Cold War, Production of nuclear materials for weapons use ceased. Equals post Cold War equals, in 1992, the cooling tower was connected to the K reactor, and the reactor operated briefly for the last time. The Secretary of Energy announced the phase out of all uranium processing. Non radioactive operations began at the replacement tritium facility, and the defense waste processing facility K reactor was placed in cold standby condition in 1993. Non-radioactive test runs of the Defense Waste Processing Facility began. Construction began on the Consolidated Incineration Facility. Tritium introduced in the replacement tritium facility and radioactive operations began. The workforce transition and community assistance was started. In 1994, the Savannah Riverside Citizens Advisory Board was established. The replacement tritium facility saw its start-up. In 1996, 
DWPF introduced radioactive material into the vitrification process. K reactor was shut down. F Canyon was restarted and began stabilizing nuclear materials. In 1997, the first high level radioactive waste tanks were closed, numbers 17 and 20. The Cold War Historic Preservation Program was begun. In 2000, the K reactor building was converted to the K area material storage facility. The Savannah River site was selected as the location of three new plutonium facilities for AMOX fuel fabrication, pit disassembly and conversion, and plutonium immobilization. WSRC earned the DOE's top safety performance honor of star status. The first shipment of transuranic waste was sent to the DOE's Waste Isolation Pilot Plant Project in New Mexico in 2001. DWPF completed production of 4 million pounds of environmentally acceptable classified waste. In 2002, the F Canyon and FB Line facilities completed their last production run. The Savannah River Technology Center participated in a study of using a nuclear power reactor to produce hydrogen from water. Scientists reported finding a new species of radiation-resistant extremophiles inside one of the tanks. It was named Kinyococcus radiotolerans. In January 2003, Westinghouse Savannah River Company completed transferring the last of F. Kinyoni Euro unregistered trademark S radioactive material to H. Tank Farm. DWPF began radioactive operations with its second melter, installed during a shutdown. The last depleted uranium metal was shipped from M area for disposition at Inviracare of Utah. The last unit of spent nuclear fuel from RBOF was shipped across the site to L reactor in preparation for RBOF's deactivation. Salt waste processing facility construction began. In 2004, the site shipped its 10,000th drum of transuranic waste to the Waste Isolation Pilot Plant, a DOE facility in New Mexico. 12 years ahead of schedule. In a visit, Secretary of Energy Spencer Abraham designated the Savannah River National Laboratory, one of 12 DOE national laboratories. Two prototype bomb disposal robots developed by SRNL were deployed for military use in Iraq. 2005 saw the tritium extraction facility completed for the purpose of extracting tritium from materials irradiated in the Tennessee Valley Authority's commercial nuclear reactors. Savannah River site's first shipment of neptunium oxide arrived at the Argonne West Laboratory in Idaho. This was the last of the USA's neptunium inventory, and the last of the materials to be stabilized to satisfy commitments for stabilizing nuclear materials. F Canyon was the first major nuclear facility at the site to be suspended and deactivated. Low enriched uranium from the site was used by a Tennessee Valley Authority nuclear power reactor to generate electricity. The tritium facility's modernization and consolidation project completed startup and replaced the gas purification and processing that took place in 232H. WSRC began multi-stage layoffs of permanent employees. In 2006, design work took place for the Salt Waste Processing Facility, a facility designed to process radioactive liquid waste stored in underground storage tanks at the site. The SWPF project work is performed by a group anchored by Parsons Corporation. Work continued on design of the MOX fuel fabrication facility by a company now known as Shaw AREVA MOX Services. The SRNL was designated as the Department of Energy Office of Environmental Management a Euro unregistered trademark S corporate laboratory. Aiken Kauinchia Euro unregistered trademark as new center for hydrogen research opened its doors. F area deactivation work was completed as was T area closure. In 2007, the tritium extraction facility opened. On August 1, construction officially began on the $4.86 billion MOX facility. Following startup testing, the facility expects a disposition rate of up to 3.5 tons of plutonium oxide each year. In 2008, Savannah River Nuclear Solutions was awarded the contract for maintenance and operation of SRS. Savannah River Remediation was awarded the contract for the liquid waste operations of SRS. 
historical markers were placed in P and R areas commemorating the role both reactors played towards winning the Cold War. Construction on the Waste Solidification Building began. In 2009, SRS began the American Reinvestment and Recovery Act project representing a $1.6 billion investment in SRS. This project, expected to run through fiscal year 2011, will result in the accelerated cleanup of nuclear waste at SRS and a significant reduction in the site footprint. In 2009 alone, more than 1,500 new workers were hired and over 800 jobs retained, due to ARRA funding. SRS construction employees reached 23 million hours without a lost time injury case. M area closure was completed in 2010, with the P and R areas following in 2011. For 2015, Congress has funded the MOX project with $345 million for FY 2015. The project is expected to continue receiving funding in the coming years. The facility will require an estimated $500 million per year to optimize construction progress. On August 17, 2015, the Savannah River site was put under lockdown due to a security event. Reactors Savannah River is home to the following nuclear reactors. Contract changes Management of the Savannah River site was to be bid in 2006, but the Department of Energy extended the contract with the existing partners for 18 months to June 2008. In 2006, DOE decided to split the WSRC contract into two new separate contracts that is, the M and O contract and the liquid waste contract to be awarded before June 2008. Responding to the DOE RFP, the Savannah River Nuclear Solutions, LLC, now a fluor partnership with Honeywell, and Huntington Ingalls Industries, submitted a proposal in June 2007 for the new M and O contract. A team led by URS and including many of the WSRC partners also submitted a proposal. On January 9, 2008 it was announced that SRNS LLC had won the new contract, with a 90-day transition period to start January 24, 2008. However, the transition was delayed by a protest filed with GAO by the URS team on January 22, 2008. The GAO denied the protest on April 25. DOS are then directed SRNS to start transition on May 2 and take over operation on August 1, 2008. See also, Savannah River National Laboratory a real AP5-3D, developed at Idaho National Laboratory for Reactor Safety Analysis and Reactor Design at the Savannah River site. Puff Plume, an atmospheric dispersion model developed for emergency response use at the Savannah River site. Building Bombs, a 1991 documentary film by Mark Murray and Susan J. Robinson. References Further reading, Fredrickson, Kari. Cold War Dixie, Militarization and Modernization in the American South 256 Pages. The Economic, Social, Environmental, and Political Impact of the Plant. External Links, Official Website of the Savannah River Site, Official Website of the MOX Project, Official Website of the Savannah River National Laboratory, Official Website of the Department of Energy, Official Website of the Savannah River Nuclear Solutions, Official website of Washington Division of URS Corporation. Official website of Parsons Corporation. Official website of Bechtel, annotated bibliography for Savannah River from the ALSOS Digital Library for Nuclear Issues, official EPA Tritium Fact Sheet, Savannah River Site Mortality Study from the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, Historic American Engineering Record No. SC-43 Physics Assembly Laboratory, Area AM, Savannah River Site, Aiken, Aiken County, SC, 107 photos, 123 data pages, 14 photo caption pages.